The Lord be with you. And with thy Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mine eyes are ever looking unto the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Do I lift up my soul? My God in the air has trusted. Let me not be confounded. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. We beseech the Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants, and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defense against all our enemies through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission, and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Here beginneth the sixth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, that thy days may be prolonged, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that you may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house, and on thy gates. And when thy son asketh thee in the time to come, saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then shalt thou say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and sore upon Egypt, 
upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. <coughs> the portion of the Psalter appointed for this morning is Psalm 25 on page 369 of the prayer book. Psalm 25, beginning on page 369. Unto thee, O Lord, will I lift up my soul. My God, I have put my trust in thee. O let me not be confounded, neither let mine enemies triumph over me. For all they that hope in thee shall not be ashamed, but such as transgress without a cause shall be put to confusion. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. Lead me forth in thy truth and learn me, for thou art the God of my salvation. In thee hath been my hope all the day long. Call to remembrance, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, which have been ever of old. O remember not the sins and offenses of my youth, but according to thy mercy think thou upon me, O Lord, for thy goodness. Gracious and righteous is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Them that are meek shall he guide in judgment, and such as are gentle, them shall he learn his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, be merciful unto my sin, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the land. The secret of the Lord is among them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever looking unto the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and in misery. The sorrows of my heart are enlarged. O bring thou me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Consider, mine enemies, how many they are, and they bear a tyrannous hate against me. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be confounded, for I have put my trust in thee. Let perfectness and righteous dealing wait upon me, for my hope hath been in thee. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians, beginning at the first verse. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light, 
Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of devils. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest. And finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God, and keep it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, 
the God, God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good to see everybody today. And here we are. We're, we're coming up uh, almost halfway through Lent. So that means Easter's right around the corner. Nice. So it's hard to believe, though, Easter's April 17th this year. That's really late. But it is what it is, right? Yep. So I didn't make the calendar. Somebody 2,000 years ago did. And so that's why we follow it. So, all right. Um, announcements this week. Remember? Fish Fry is Friday, and uh, tickets are available today for the last day at $9 a piece. Um, so be sure to pick them up. Uh, Cynthia's got them, and she'll be out out there uh, when we're all done today. And uh, and so we got that going on. And also, uh, thanks to everybody that came out yesterday for, especially for the work day. Um, we got we moved 10 yards of dirt yesterday. And uh, we still have, unfortunately, more dirt to move. Um, the, uh, we'll, we'll have another, another five yards coming this week so we can finish that up. But on Saturday morning, we will begin putting in the fence because we got to get to the point with that because we're running out of Lent. So anyway, and uh, I mean, if you want me to extend Lent, I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> Y'all are just looking at me like I'm nuts. So anyway, um, so, uh, you know, remember that. And remember, we always have breakfast in the morning um, just before we go after, uh, after morning prayer, breakfast, and then working out. All right, um, usual classes are going on, so just please make note of that. Um, also, if you, uh, one of the things we always do is we always provide uh, desserts at the fish fry. And uh, Loretta's here. Where are you, Loretta? Raise your hand. There she is. Um, see Loretta and sign up for some desserts to bring. And uh, you can drop those off, uh, you know, certainly no later than Friday afternoon. Um, it's, I know Loretta would appreciate them being here by Thursday, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so that she can get it all, her and Verna get it all worked out and cut up and laid out and everything like that. So, all right. Um, let's see here. What else? Ah, Easter flower envelopes are in the pews for the first time. You know what to do with them. Um, fill them out and make your dedications for this year. And also, don't forget about the Lenten appeal. We don't really, you know, hammer that really, really hard like some places do. Um, but I just trust you in your generosity. Every year we've, we've done pretty amazing when it comes to our Lenten appeal. And I just encourage you to keep at that and uh, and we'll be sending all the monies in for that remember this is for building churches in Haiti and in the Philippines and uh, I happen to know the priest that that runs our show in the Philippines what a fabulous fabulous young man he is actually he's getting kind of older he's following me in my footsteps so anyway <laughs> but uh, so I encourage you please um, you know prayerfully uh, give to that and uh, make sure that we can put this together all right, blessing of birthdays and anniversaries. Anyone had one in the past week? Come on up, Candler. Nathan, birthday prayer is found on page 597 in the prayer book. If you'll turn to that, let us kneel and pray this prayer together. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be keeping them unspotted from the world, strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, 
and raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday, Nathan. Thank you. Brother. Our sermon hymn today is hymn 58.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In case you were wondering, the reason we sang all six verses of that hymn is here we are in the middle of Lent. It's such a synopsis of what our Lord and Savior made possible for us. So I thought we got to read, we got to sing all those words. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed reading those words as you were singing them. So now in today's gospel lesson, it starts off just absolutely incredible. Jesus was casting out a devil and it was dumb. No, that does not mean it was stupid. It means the person that the devil was inhabiting couldn't speak because of the demon's influence. And Jesus heals this particular person. And it really was, in very, very many ways, an act of power and of goodness. And the gospel lesson tells us that the people wondered at it. They marveled. Now I want you to think back to when John the Baptist sent his followers to Jesus to inquire whether he was the one who is to come. And what Jesus does is at that point he points out just such happenings as in today's gospel as proof that the new age is now on the point of arriving. Go and tell John, he tells the messengers, what ye have seen and heard, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, and so on and so forth. And as though he knew, however, that such facts would fail to convince everybody, he added at that time, and blessed is he who takes no offense at me. And now, in the present passage, we have a concrete instant of people taking offense at him. It tells us the demon had gone out, but not all who witnessed the healing know that the kingdom of God was come upon them. Those who do not recognize the finger of God, as Jesus says, are apparently of two sorts. The first are those that are prejudiced or cynical. And the second group are those that are insensitive, or to use the biblical phrase, blind. The latter, having just seen, watched a sign, a miracle, a driving out of a demon, now they ask for another sign. They're blind to the significance of what has just happened. They want a sign from heaven. So presumably something more spectacular than an act of healing. You see, the thing is for them, casting out demons was actually nothing particularly extraordinary. I mean, is not the question, do not our sons also cast them out? I mean, they may not be offended in Jesus, as Jesus meant it, but they're just flat unimpressed. Heaven has drawn near as healing and emancipating love and they're incapable of seeing that yes, heaven is near at hand. They can only recognize it in some kind of overwhelming manifestation of incredible power. Now, not all who rejected Jesus did so because of a failure to see the sign. Some did so because they misinterpreted what happened. He casts out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. They're aware of the extraordinary character of what happened, but they put the worst possible spin on it. Those in the first group are blind to the significance, the divine significance of healing and emancipating love. And these in the second group deny its very existence. Indeed, what they do is they go as far as to ascribe to Jesus' actions 
to the promptings and the power of evil. And Jesus, of course, points out to them how utterly absurd they are in supposing that evil could actually cast out evil. And he points to the essential and irreconcilable opposition between good and evil. And also points to the significance of his acts as betokening the final defeat of evil and the arrival of God's reign. And sadly, both groups are still with us today, both within and without the church. I mean, we don't talk necessarily about demoniacs and Beelzebub and when's the last time you said it was a sign from heaven? See, we have our cynics who will not recognize the manifestations of divine goodness in human life because they know or think they know in advance that there's no real goodness except of course in themselves you know it's probably true that when we call evil everything outside ourselves we show that whatever our theory on that subject matter is, we really regard ourselves as being good. I mean, think about it. How otherwise could you recognize evil? And for this reason, there's a certain moral pride or snobbishness, if you will, whether someone recognizes it or not, that always goes along with cynicism. Jesus clearly has no doubt in his mind, and nor do we, as to how his opponents would answer the question he put to them, by whom do your sons cast them out? I mean, they certainly were not going to make of themselves or their sons the judgment that they had just made concerning him. You see, a person ought to be exceedingly ready and quick to see the evil in oneself and exceedingly ready and quick to see the goodness in others. As a matter of fact, it certainly can be argued that we can really only see goodness in others and that we can only really see evil in all of its depth in ourselves. These cynical critics of Jesus, perhaps because they're incapable of seeing the evil in themselves, are not able to recognize the divine goodness which so powerfully manifests itself in Christ Jesus. But the blind, the insensitive, the dull of heart, they're still with us too. They seek a sign from heaven because they have not seen the signs of heaven within our earthly life. One of the most dangerous heresies and probably one of the widest spread has always been that which puts God just so far off and makes religion just a curiously weird kind of thing. Religion, at its best, is just a natural response to the deepest implications of our common life. Worship is not some kind of strange variety of excitement which takes one momentarily out of the world. It's sensitive to the profounder and subtler meanings of the world. It is appreciation raised to its highest power. It's man's answer to the mystery and beauty which overwhelms but so fills 
the entire scene of human life. It's the inevitable result of going deeply into the significance of any experience. Edna St. Vincent Millay put it beautifully when she wrote, God, I can push the grass apart and lay my finger on thine heart. One does not need to live abnormally to see God or see strange signs to know that he's close by. You only have to live deeply and sensitively and in Christ's presence. God is near to us in every manifestation of light, of love, and of beauty. He has made himself known in his supremely authentic character in Jesus Christ and in that character within the Christian community. For it's there that he confronts us in our sin and consoles us in our contrition. And he's also by our side whenever we do battle for such things as justice and truth. You see, my friends, we do not need a sign. We need only be able to recognize the many signs we already have. Amen. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, do we ascribe as most justly do great honor, glory, and majesty, both now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let your lights so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
Let us pray. Dearly beloved, we offer the Eucharist this day in union with Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who continues to make intercession on our behalf in the heavens. Make your prayers this day for all those who are sick and suffering, remembering especially those of this place, for Brian, Francis, Laura, Norm, Pat, and Randy. We also pray for our family, friends, and others who need and desire our prayers, especially those we remember now in our own hearts. We pray for those who are traveling, remembering Alex, Cheryl, Nancy, and Tom. And in our provincial prayer cycle, we pray for our Diocese of the Eastern United States and also the Diocese of New Orleans. And finally, I bid your prayers this day for peace in the Ukraine. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide, we beseech thee, the nations of the world, into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours also may be acceptable in the sight of God the Father Almighty. May the, May the Lord receive, receive this sacrifice of my hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, especially Joseph, our president, Roy, our governor, and all those in authority with them, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially Chandler, our ordinary, and all priests and deacons, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in the love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you ever sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walk you from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. meet right in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who by bodily fasting does curb our sinfulness, uplift our hearts, and bestow both virtue and its reward upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that Thou, of Thy tender mercy, didst give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby His one oblation of Himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and that institute, and in His Holy Gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice until His coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, a merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify 
with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we often present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we're unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to, come to this to thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. <laughs>
thought about what this friend is going to share. She preserved my body and soul and the last and last. Receive the most precious body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray together in great thanksgiving. Almighty and ever living God, we must most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. 
and dost assure us thereby by favor and goodness towards us. And I, the ordinary members of corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you.